Have you got back pain? Have you been told that it's coming from a slipped disc? Have you got sciatica? Have you been told it's from a slipped disc? Today I'm going to go through some of the reasons why it's happened and also why it's not getting better and what you can do to help yourself as well. So first of all, a disc bulge, what is it? How does it happen? Well, here's a model spine, rather large. This represents the disc and this red thing represents the disc bulge and if it hits a nerve, boom, it can actually cause pain along that nerve and then cause sciatica. But discs actually have nerves in them themselves and when the discs themselves get damaged, they can cause back pain, but they can also cause pain radiating down the leg without actually hitting the nerve and causing sciatica. So there are tests that we can do to actually try and figure out what's the actual problem. Is it because if you have true sciatica, i.e. a nerve pinch because of a disc bulge, um, or do you have some kind of other discogenic pain, of which there are many causes and reasons. And basically the symptoms I said you could have you could have back pain, you could have sciatica, but you could also have no symptoms at all, which is why an MRI can actually be useless in actually telling you what's really wrong, because there are people walking around with disc bulges and they'll only know about them when they have an MRI. So while you can have a disc bulge and it can be the cause of your pain, it may not be the cause of the pain. And the real question is, if you do have a disc bulge, why is it causing you pain? Why isn't it getting better? And so there's a number of reasons. Now, one of the big reasons, okay, is the big muscles. Okay, are just too tight around your spine and your pelvis. So here's the back and there's big muscles. There's a big muscle at the front called the psoas. Okay, and it attached to the vertebral bodies, and then you have your discs here, and this is a postural muscle. It helps lift your leg up, or if you're lying on your back, it helps you do a sit-up or lift both legs up. But when it's really tight, you're not going to be able to do a sit-up, you're going to be in agony. And that can be because of the disc, or it can be because these muscles are far too tight, which can be due to stress. It can be due to the fact that you never actually stretch them because you sit down too much, or you've over-exercised them. And in stress and tension, there's these muscles. There's also your diaphragm as well. Your diaphragm, if that's not moving properly, that can cause your pelvic floor to freeze up, which can cause back pain and discs to crush. Because what happens is these big muscles are tight, so they clamp on the disc and they cause it to bulge more and hurt more. And then when they're relaxed, you don't feel the pain. And so a lot of people have got disc pain because these big muscles, whether in the back or the front, are just too tight. And you get them relaxed or you're shown some relaxing exercises and you can feel a lot better or you go to a chiropractor or an osteopath or a physio and they do one or two sessions they do some clicking and popping things relax and you feel a lot better in just a few sessions now i've actually got a free resource the, the guide to better pain in 10 days or less back pain in 10 days you can reach out to the clinic so message us and we'll send you a link or it's actually on our website anyway bodyimbalanceuk.com or thepainreliefcenters.co.uk and there's 10 day back pain thing at the top just sign up for it it's free there's probably some special offers in there just in case it's not that so there's some simple things that can actually relieve your disc pain very quickly because it's just the big muscles now the next reason that may be a problem is that the tiny little muscles that attach to all these bony bits, the tiny little muscles that lift this off, they're too weak. And so it could be that you've got a combination of really tight big muscles and the tiny little muscles are too weak. Now, if the tiny little muscles are too weak, then you've probably had back pain from, you've done some lifting, you've done some gardening all day and you're fine, but then you just go and pick up a pencil and your back goes twang and then you're floored. And that's usually, or well, very often, because the small muscles in your spine that do all the tiny little work of actually, well, big work of lifting one vertebra off another, they're too weak. And you need the specific exercises to strengthen them. Now, those are mechanical reasons. And why does the disc actually happen in the first place? Why can it bulge or fray? Well, maybe. So basically, you've got, oh, you've got little muscles, so LM, 
And then we have ooh, H, and then we've also got 4, we've got N. Basically, this is a disc, there's fibrous in and outer part, and then there's basically a toothpaste stuff on the inside. Now, if this outer layer becomes too brittle and fragile, then that's what allows the holes in it and the central toothpaste substance bulges out. And why does it become too brittle? Well, maybe it's because of dehydration. And dehydration in the disc can happen because of a lack of water, but also a lack of the nutrients, that's N, that hold the water in the disc. So you could be drinking enough, but you haven't got enough of the right nutrients that pull the stuff, that pull the water into the disc and keep them hydrated. But there's also other nutrients that you need for healthy discs as well, which comes to the actual repair process. So you've basically got the big muscles, could be the little muscles, could be hydration, could be nutrition as well. And why isn't your disc getting better? Well, one reason is the actual causes are not being addressed. And so in a lot of people, they think of going to a chiropractor, osteopath, physiotherapist, and that's great. I'm a chiropractor, trained as a chiropractor, do a lot of physiotherapy type stuff, do lots of different things to help physically, give the right exercises as well. That actually will help pull the spine apart, like in relaxing exercises as well. But what if it's nutritional? You need to get the nutrition seen to, and one of the things that happens when you get a disc bulge, boom, is that naturally there's things called macrophages. They're part of the immune system. When you get anything, any kind of injury, macrophages are the things that start eating away scar tissue, eating away the debris. And what should happen is you have a disc bulge is your own macrophages should eat and chomp this away. But if you're lacking zinc, if you're lacking other nutrients, then your macrophages don't work properly because there's another set of things called Metallo, metalloprases, I can never remember the name, it doesn't really matter, MMPs, and if they aren't working properly with the macrophages, then you're not going to get the macrophages eating away the disc, and that can be because of toxins as well. So the underlying cause of your disc problems may be dehydration and nutrition, or it may be toxicity that's actually caused all of these things to fail to function. So every time you get a tiny little injury, more and more things break. So you have not fixing the actual causes, and then there's time as well. If you have weak muscles, it can take at least three months of training them properly to take the pressure off of the discs, and then the discs themselves can take up to a year to heal. And in some studies, it can take what, a year, and that can also include 40 sessions of physiotherapy or chiropractic or osteopathy, that's 40, not one or two, but to actually fix it, it could take a year of intense work and the right exercise and the right nutrition. So if you have a chronic disc or back problem and you've not really got anywhere because you maybe only had one or two sessions or you've only just done some simple stretching exercises, you haven't been given core exercises that actually pull the spine apart, not just sit-ups and the normal core stuff from Pilates or yoga, but some stuff specifically that's anti-gravity. Or it could be nutrition as well. All of these things have to be looked at and then you have to give yourself time and space to actually explore all of these things. Now that's something that I actually start looking at when people come to me for a full consultation, we we'll start looking at all of these different things. We've got some free resources as well. So if you think it might be that you want to explore the nutritional side of pain, then reach out, I'll send you one of our resources and you can have a look at that. Or if you want to have a shortcut, just make, make an appointment, come and see us come and see me. Um, I also do a lot of nutritional work online. So if you're going to a chiropractor or an osteopath and it's helping, but not as much as you want to, or it hasn't helped, then give us a call because I do work um, yeah, with nutrition on Zoom, etc., etc. Don't have to come to the clinic to get that seen to. Hope that helps. Reach out for some free resources or just give us a call at Body Imbalance. We'll look at one of the links around and yeah, I'll help you to the best of my ability. Be well.